Alright everyone, so um, today we're going to be starting the new series with HFPS. Um, now I'm guessing you guys already know how to import it. This is in 2020, so if you're in 2020, go to Window Package Manager. Go to this top bar here and search up Horror FPS Kit, and then click Import or Install. It's going to be a minute to import because it's 1.61 gigs, which is um, a fair bit. So it depends on your processor speed, but it might take a minute, it might take a couple seconds. You never really know. I'll be back when it is done. Alright, so um, now what we're going to do is obviously close out of there, and let's just go ahead and load up the uh, showcase room and just kind of uh, see see everything. So let's go to main menu real quick, we'll go into the game, maximize here, and we'll just go ahead and play. Make sure I'm recording. Alright. <coughs> I've had a lot of times where I wasn't actually recording. Alright, so our volume is a little loud. So we have the settings, general graphics controls, back, play new game, and the load scene, which all is working. Fine, perfect, and good. It's going great. All right. Uh, it's going a little longer than I would want it to, but that's kind of how it goes sometimes. All right, so now we have this. Alright, um, that flashing blue is just the shaders loading in. Don't worry, that will not actually pop up in the, um, that scared me a little. I, f I knew that was there, too. So, don't worry, the blue flashing won't actually pop up inside the game. That is just because of shaders loading in. sound all right <laughs> nice. Alright, so I broke it. Uh, 10 out of 10. But anyways, uh, other than that bug, uh, we know that everything works and fine. So we're going to go ahead and we'll create a new scene. And we'll call it the base. We'll just do the basic scene with everything built in. Remove the main camera. And we'll create a platform. By just going over here, right click, and we'll make a cube. I'm guessing if you're watching this, you probably already have a level. If not, well, <coughs> there we are. So I'm using hotkeys, W is uh, the moving tool, E is rotation, R is for scaling, T is for uh, rectangle. So um, what you want to do is, now you could go in, you could go to content, prefabs, um, go to your like player stuff and you could do that. Or you can click over here, go to, where is it, tools, HFPS kit, setup, game, first person body. And then he'll pop up right here anyways. And that's going to be at zero zero, which is the center of the entire world. And we'll probably want to fix them a little bit. There we go. Now, if we go ahead and maximize it and we play, well, already here. Look at that. 
10 out of 10, team. Alright, um, but... So that's the basis of setting up a scene. Uh, it's not that complicated, it's just two buttons. But we're gonna go over some of this, uh... I'm gonna go ahead and maximize the inspector panel here. And we'll go over these scripts. So you see, um... Maybe not maximize, but like... So we'll look at player controller here. You see that there are drop-down menus for the character's state currently. So you have the stand state, and the, cr the crouch state, and the prone state. Prone means you're all the way down. Crouch means you're halfway. Standing, obvious. If you look at the movement state, there's normal. And then... What else is there? Um... Well, it's probably like injured or something. I don't know. I haven't looked at that one very much. But um, character controller, obviously, these are all basic things. The water particles that you want when the player goes into water and all that. But you can see we have the inventory, the pause menu, everything works. <coughs> player controller is pretty easy. It's just simple. Everything here is basically tells you what it is. Stamina settings max stamina, regeneration speed, jump, the amount it takes for when you jump, movement, all that stuff, which this has changed a fair bit in the last couple of updates. But there's also the documentation, which has also been updated every single update. So we have that. Now, um, obviously, we don't want to just have a white cube. So let's go ahead and set up an actual scene. And uh, we can do this in many different ways, but I am personally just going to use the stuff that we already have. So um, we'll use floor and ceiling. We'll get a f we'll get a floor here. And there's that. I'm pretty sure we have the surface. Nope. All right. Um. So we have this. So now I'm going to teach you guys something that a lot of people don't actually know. If you press, if you look inside the scene, you press Control and D, and then you hold Shift or Control. Control makes it so it snaps to the grid. So you can actually place these perfectly in line with each other. See? Or you can press Control D, press V, and grab by a vertex and select and drag it to another vertex. Or a ver I'm pretty sure no not vertex is that the word I don't remember but anyways you can just do this to make your levels a little bit easier so if we just duplicate that press hold V drag it like that I would recommend making sure that this is all separate there we go no it's oh, don't do that don't don't drag your game UI into your player. So now I'm going to go ahead and teach you guys something called uh, scene <laughs> hierarchy optimization. What you want to do is you just want to go, uh, uh, you just want to basically make an empty game object, call it ground, and just drag all this in here. This is specifically so you can just close that and move it around however you want to without having to like uh, maneuver through them. And you can obviously click if you want to go to the like, specific one, uh, expand this and like click over here. The reason that, that happens is the UI gets in the way. Um, that's just kind of what happens. Can't really move it or do anything because it's uh, UI. It's centered. Even if you do move it, it doesn't do anything because it's uh, centered in the world. But that's all right. It happens. Um, anyways, back to our player and our ground. We can go ahead and... Let's just grab one of these, lower it a little bit, and then we can just like duplicate it and then rotate it just like that. Just like this, and then we'll make a little pool area-ish type thing, I guess. Just by how I was showing you guys, dragging by the vertex, or I'm not sure if that's actually the word that it's supposed to be, but by dragging by, by, dragging by the specific point. Um, oops, oh my lord. And then we will now have 
what is essentially a drop. So if we you know if we go ahead and play now, first of all, you can hear we have footsteps now, and like everything's different. But now we have a little drop here. So let's go ahead and fill it with water. Now, uh, HFPS comes with some water stuff you can use. Mm. Just gotta balance it correctly. Not sure if that's actually the water though. Pretty sure. Let's see. I gotta actually have the water thing, I guess. Um, there should be a. I don't know why it's like that. Um, water, 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 water. No. It's water. Prototype. No. Hmm. Models. This. Models after the environment. Floors. Floor. We could probably just do this, right? And then just add the water text material over it. Oh, totally. Totally do that. Whatever. Um, I don't know. Um, I'm trying to think of this real quick. I don't know what's happening. Okay, so there's supposed to be something here. So I don't like things like this because I can never see where it actually is. Really, really confusing. Okay, there we go. Okay. Now, if we just manage to do like that, we can do this. But now we just need. So now we have like a water like thing, but we don't have actually a texture for it. So. But if we were to like do it like this, and then just do that, um, I know that there's a there's a water thing. I know there is. Sure, why not? That works. That works per perfectly. Um, there we go. Now we have some water. Now we just had to set the shader correctly, and now we have water. Um, we can turn down the turn the gloss. Detail. Make it a little more blue. Well, not really more blue, but actually, we might do. Mm, there we go. That works. Okay. Um. Can do this. Okay. Let's try that now. Maybe that'll look better. And we'll have some nice water in here. Oh god, that looks terrible. That looks frozen. Alright, whatever. I'm just gonna go ahead and delete these. Alright. Um, that's fine. Uh whatever. I think that looks good. Alright, so now we have water. We can jump in. Splash splash. Alright. And we have a little nice environment we can run around in. Um, and let's just go ahead and add some of these tables that they have. Environment. Props, tables, 
table, table, table. All right, so cont now um, add some dust, I guess. Everyone likes dust. So now we have some little tables. I know there's not really much I'm showing you guys right now, but I mean, there's not really much to show you guys else other than like this stuff with level design here. Because we're just setting up a basic level. Um, but that's all there really is to setting up a new level. Um, nothing really big. So let's go ahead and make a new folder called scenes. And we're going to call this scene. All right. And just go to build settings. And you'll have all these in here. Uh, you don't need all of these. Uh, you um can delete uh, these two and just add your scene like that and yeah um, actually you know let's go ahead and set the player settings so if you click on build settings you'll get this window to pop up you can set it over here so now I will do my company you put your company name here UD tutorials tutorial oh tortillo <laughs> You'll be in 0 0.1 or whatever you'll want. When you select your icon, just pick whatever you want. I'm just going to pick the flashlight icon. That didn't work. Flashlight. There we go. You can also add a default cursor, which would be like this. If I like, if I added like one, I could like do this one. And then if I was in my game, and I, well, well you have to, you'd have to set it to cursor. So you'd go over here just like this. You make a new one. You set it to cursor like that. Apply, and then I go over here, drag it over here, and then I'd have a little lantern. That's how you can make a little cursor if you want, like for your game. If you want to pause, and you'll have like a little lantern like that. You can do that. I don't like it at all. I hate it. So I'm gonna delete that and then delete this. But that's that's just whatever you want. Um, you can set the resolution, full screen. I like maximize window to be my normal one just because I hate when uh, you can't like see half the stuff. Now you can set it to just be like this all the time and like shrink it, or you can click override and set different um, different icons for different like uh, way for different uh, resolutions. Splash image. Uh, you can have your icon here. I like to have mine to all sequential, which means I'd get made with Unity for two seconds, and then you can add yours. Um, you can only remove Unity's icon if you pay. I don't like that. Um, we don't need that. Now, uh, this stuff you don't really need to worry about unless you're going deep into stuff, into game development. All you really need to worry about is product name, company name, version icon resolution and splash image and other than that your build settings are pretty much pretty much done um, with player settings there's also the quality settings that you need to make sure you tweak if depending on what you're doing if you're using a render pipeline you just put that in here but it should automatically set um, but obviously like low this would be an eighth res in my games. I usually put my games to be to have very, very, very vast differences in quality depending on what you're playing on. So I like to have this really low. Um, but other than that, you don't really need to work with any of this stuff. The physics are already all set up. Um, but yeah, so that's gonna be it for today. I uh, hope you guys enjoyed. Yeah.